could read your questions if you could read your writing. Welcome back to Burnout, live on Manx Radio TT and also live on our Manx Radio TT Facebook page as well. We're here in Douglas in the Isle of Man on this sunny day. Thanks to Steve Parrish for joining us early on the show. All the coverage of that interview is also on our Manx Radio TT Facebook page as well. Well, this is uh, going to be a funny one to do. Last time I spoke to this man on air was four years ago. I'm sat with uh, Ivan Linton's crew chief, Danny Horn from Silsden. Now, Danny, first of all, before we start talking about the serious stuff, uh, you become a bit more of a celebrity as of the other day. What, what happened on, um, what day is it now? We're on Tuesday. So what day was it? On Saturday you were on Yes, Saturday after the race, uh, Jack Appleyard. I did my apprenticeship at uh, Colin Appleyards and I've always known Jack since we were a baby and now he's a presenter on BBC Radio Leeds. So they did a TT special at Squires Cafe in North Yorkshire, I think it is, uh, live over there. So he just wanted to do a bit after the race to see what had gone on and a bit of background knowledge really on the TT. Now you sent me a little text earlier saying uh, this better be a better interview that he did, so no pressure. No, you know, I don't really hold out much hope for you, to be fair. He's pretty good as Jack, and he's, uh, he's, I mean, he's only been out it a year, so and he's, he's already going better. But, you know, you've got time, you've got a bit of time, you know. Well, let's just catch up after four years. I mean, obviously, I have seen you in between, but four years ago, we went on air, and we actually talked about something about you that perhaps a lot of people don't know. Do you remember what we talked about? Yeah, about my uh, OCD. We had a bit of a... Uh, I think there were a bit of something going on in the press at the time about it, wasn't it? So I don't know how you cottoned on to that, but... Uh, I think I gave you a kid, didn't I? A can cleaner, something like that, or something like that. So, That's right. Yeah. I, you didn't give me a kid. Let's just no, no, let's no, clear no, that no, up quite quickly. Kid. No, no, d- d- no, I don't think I'll give you a kid, but I'm, I don't know. There might be something about, but we'll see. Yes, you have got obsessive compulsive disorder. That's well known within the team, but your job is you're a crew chief for Ivan Linton, and I guess you do need to be quite clean and tidy with where you work. Yeah, it, it just, I think if you're tidy, you, uh, it, it reflects on your work and, you, you know, your bike's tidy, your area around you's tidy, your toolbox is tidy and it, and it just, uh, I think it reflects on your work and, you know, it, it's got to be right when he goes out on bike, um, otherwise you're not you're doing your job right, so I don't think it's a bad problem and, uh, you know, it, it costs me a bit of time now and again, I would take 10 minutes to tidy up or something like that when I could just get on with job, but, uh, yeah, it's... I don't think it's a problem really. Now let's talk about your job because I had a request earlier in the week to speak to a few more mechanics and a crew chief because people want to know what you do you know we get an awful lot of the riders talking on Manx Radio TT but we don't always get the opportunity to speak to the rest of the team. Just explain to anyone that doesn't know what exactly your job entails. Uh, when we're here it's, it's uh, you're probably the closest person to the rider uh, listening to what he says when he comes in you know, we change anything on the bike that he wants, even if we don't think it's, you know, scientifically right. We just do it because his head's got to be right going out there. So he comes in, we do a debrief, we go through. I have a few mechanics with me that I ask them to do the jobs as well. You know, their specific jobs and roles, and uh, yeah, just keep the team going. Really, the team owners fly in and out. Um, Roy and Ben from RC Express. Um, so when they're away, I'm left to, to look after the fort, so to speak. And uh, in fact, I need to get a, a few invoices into them for the food. So <laughs> yeah, it just reminded me actually. So that's good. Um, and then yeah, just away from here, look after the bikes, build all the bikes, except for the twin, which is built over here by Adam uh, on the Isle of Man. And a bit of logistics, chatting with sponsors, organisers, a bit of radio. We did something for Amazon TV the other day and things like that. So whatever really, whatever's thrown at me, I'll do. You are quite a tight-knit team, aren't you? Just tell me a little bit about who else is in the team. Yeah, we're a tiny little team. I know we put on such a good show down there. The awning looks as good as anybody in the paddock and uh, we do it on a smaller budget than a lot. You know, We have Daffabet and Devitt are on board and they, they help fund it. And uh, But the team, yeah, there's, there's Roy and Ben, the owners. There's um, Adam, who builds the bikes over here, like I said, the super twin. I have young Adam from Northern Ireland. He was one of my mechanics. And we have Youssef this year, who uh, he's come on board for the TT, so he's another mechanic. And we have Dave, who does us some um, like promotion work and gets us involved with sponsors and things like that. So yeah, it's, and we, we actually have a Swiss masseuse who comes as well, who looks after Ivan. Um, and then last but not least, we have Ivan riding the bike. I won't go any further about uh, the Swiss masseuse. Just um, talking about John Dixon then, that was here last year with you, and he's given me a question to ask you. He says, what happens when you see Heineken and what does the rest of the team do? 
Oh, that, What's that, that mean? That, that's not as bad as I thought the question was going to be, actually, so that's <laughs> all right. Yeah, they, they just run for cover, to be fair. You know, I don't know what it is with Heineken, but it just that's gets me totaled. Um, Has there been an experience, perhaps, that he's talking about? We have actually got Ivan Linton in the studio with us right now, and he's laughing away. What, what, what angle on this story is he trying to get out of you? I don't know, really. I don't, it just... It always feels, you know, it always feels a bit windy when I've had an Heineken and, and stuff like that. The truck rocks, and you just got, you know, you just got to sleep with truck rocking. I don't know, but it's, uh, yeah, you're getting a we're bit. We're not back to that Swiss Masseuse, are we? No, no, no. You, that, that were also Grand Prix, so you want there, but uh, yeah, Heineken. I just need to stay away from it, really. No, odd Peroni and stay on the Yorkshire tea. To be fair, it's, uh, it's a much safer option. You had to get that. Here. <laughs> that is something that I was going to mention within the interview. Was I, th I was going to ask you about your highlights of um, being a crew chief of the number of years that you have been. But I think one of your highlights must be when Yorkshire Tea actually sponsored the team. Oh, it's, it's, uh, don't get me wrong, Daffabet and Devitt and all the other uh, partners in the team are uh, are amazing. But for me, Yorkshire Tea is awesome. You know, they give us like thousands of bags at start of year and, and stuff like that and it's just a great, great company when you actually see what they do with the Brownlee Brothers and Michael Vaughan and stuff like that they're, they're a mega company for, a, for just a, a tea company the best team in the world obviously but uh, they do some, some good stuff and it's, uh, yeah, it's great to be associated with them really does it go back to maybe your um, relationship that you had with Guy Martin with regards to you being his crew chief because he likes his tea? Yeah, well, he, he were a he were a fifteen day, you know, fifteen brew a day man like myself. So, and um, it were always Yorkshire tea in our camp. So yeah, it probably just carried on from there and, and stuff like that. And um, yeah, there were ne kettles never cold in in any garage so it, that I work in. So it's yeah, it's a great sponsor to have. Whenever anyone talks to you and interviews you, they do always bring up that relationship, as say with Guy Martin, because you were a part of the film as well. Yeah, it was a great relationship. You know, five years started with him in two thousand and nine, uh, and and carried it through. We did the film, we did some TV work, radio work then as well, and it was it was brilliant. Actually, you know, it's so much different. It's a great job. It's the best job in the world anyway. Being a, a mechanic at road race mechanic, it's it's awesome. But uh, yeah, to be involved with Guy and stuff like that, the the different stuff we did, you know. We went to Goodwood Festival of Speed and you know, so much stuff. It was, it was brilliant, and you know he's a good lad. And uh, I, I'm glad he's stopped now. To be fair, he's uh, you know he, he didn't need to prove all. He's, he's done what he's done, and uh, a great record he has. So fair play to him. What do you make of him being a father now to Dotty? Oh yeah. <laughs> God help that kid, but uh, it's going to have some upbringing in it. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm sure he'd be a great dad. You know, I saw how he looked after his dog, and it would treat like uh, a king, wasn't it? So uh, yeah, I'm sure the little uh, little kid will be fine. You also work with Cam Donald as well. Yeah, Cam were Cam were amazing. You know, probably one of my highlights uh, uh, working at the TT was Cam's uh, superbike win on the Saturday, followed up by the superstock win on the Monday in 2008. And uh, it was only my second year here. I'd, I'd worked the year before with Martin Finnegan, and uh, to come back one year later and, and for him to win that on the bikes we'd built was uh, was awesome. And how great to see him now extending his career in TV presenting. Yeah, he's, uh, he's good as Cam. He's a good lad, but uh, some of his uh, phrases for stuff. I, I, where's that come <laughs> from? You know, Ashbelt and all that, whatever he says and all that business and that, you don't even say Kawasaki right does he <laughs> oh dear you can be critical you can be giving him the critique on that rather than me but uh, yeah it is great to have Danny Horn in the studio he is the crew chief for Ivan Linton so let's talk about Ivan what's his personality like off the bike um well they stood here so I better not be too harsh but no it is all right he's uh he's from Bardney so you know he's he's obviously got a lot of relatives around him and stuff like that they're all you know his uncles his brother and stuff like that but you know apart from that he's, he's pretty good he's you know he's luckily at Scarberry had a big crash and cut his sixth finger off so that's all right so he's a bit, a bit more normal now and yeah he's just a good lad really <laughs> He is here in the studio. We will be getting a photo of Ivan and Danny together and putting that onto the Manx Radio TT Facebook page. He's doing a good job. I mean, oh my goodness me, there's PB's been smashed all over the place. What a TT he's having this year. Yeah, it's, it's amazing what uh, contract time does really, isn't it? You know, he, uh, he's, he's, riding, you know, he's riding for a contract next year and uh, he knows that. So uh, <laughs> it's either we said either a 130 or the uh, bring the super twin <laughs> trophy back home. You know, and um, he's obviously stepped it up, so he wants a 130. I don't know if he's confident for tomorrow, but uh, <laughs> he's going for 130 fairly early. So, but no, he's, he's having an amazing TT. He's come, we, we've we've actually gone back to, it's funny, we've gone back to how me and Guy used to be, like, 
round in as vans, going to little uh, races as cells, little club races um, all over. We've done like seven meetings, I think, up to now, and a bit of British Superbikes as well. Just so, well, you know, you won't get to speak to many people in Bardney, will you? Because you know, you don't want to t talk to your relatives all the time, do you? So <laughs> I suppose when he comes out here, there's you know different people. It's and a it's, trip out, is it? Yeah, it's a trip out. You know, they don't get let out much, do they? But. Uh, you know, he obviously goes into Lincoln now and again and speaks to normal people and, and, you know, comes out here and does the same. You are mean to each other, aren't you? But it just shows that you do have a good relationship. I did listen somewhere um, to you talking about pits and that's what I want to talk to you now about because is this the best part of your job, doing the pits? Oh, by far. It's absolutely awesome. You know, the buzz you get when you hear the klaxon coming into the uh, to the pit lane and, and you're ready, you know, you're prepped to go and, and stuff like that. You don't get that really in any other uh, any other racing situation unless you're in endurance. Um, but uh, here where it's it's so basic and raw as well, which is, is a lot better than endurance. I haven't done it in endurance, but um, I love it out there. It's so raw, you get a gravity fed, um, it's like a milk, milk journey or whatever, milk or whatever it is dropping your fuel in and you've got a wheel to go in and there's other bikes flying past you and it's it's crazy but it just goes silent and you, you do your job, get it done in the way and you're like, it's just, it's just happened, it's, but it's, it's mega. So how great have your pit stops been over the last week? I mean, obviously for what Ivan is doing and he is getting his personal, back lap t personal best lap times in the Superbike, Supersport and Superstock. So is that down to Ivan Racing or is that you just nailing the pit stops? I don't think you really need to ask, do you? It's, it's all in the pit stop, but no, no. It's uh, we, we work. Everything's done as a team, you know. It's there's there's no I in team, and uh, we work. You know, we work so well as a unit. It's not just the three lads over the wall and Ivan there. We've got young Adam there. We've got Yusef um, on behind the wall, and they're they're always feeding information to us and stuff like that. And it's you know, it's it's the whole package really, and, and everyone's working so well that um, I think that's what's now reflecting on the track as well. How much time do you get to prep? How much time do you get to practice pits um like a few years ago when i when i'd never been here we, we used to practice a lot and and like with guy especially we we're a bit of a fidgeter and there always there was some drama at pits with guy and i remember him running into dave castle in way into pits and stuff and he moved our pit out and we're all oh, just chaos always something going wrong uh, so you practice with him all the time just to shut him up for five minutes and, and get the head sorted so he can have his visor done but with us, we practiced a couple of times a few years ago, and now it's it's pretty much clockwork. We got the same, we had the same team for four years, so you know, basically all I say to the lads before we go out is, you're putting a visor on, you're putting fuel in the tank, and I'm doing a real real wheel. We do it every every day. We're here, so you know, there's no panic. So, what's coming up for the team for the rest of the year? Um, I think our next race is back here in uh, for the Southern Hundred. Then we've got um, we've got two brands actually to do for BSB because uh, that involves getting Volvo Trucks London to come. You know, it's the, they'll come as guests to us. They're a sponsor our truck, and uh, we'll do that. And then we've got Ulster Grand Prix um, and Macau. Yeah, Macau is always a good one for you, isn't it? And you get a lot of downtime out there as well. But we won't perhaps talk about what you get up to as a team in Macau. Yeah, Macau's a good crack. You know, to be fair, we're not we're not a big drinking team, and I don't. Th there's not much Heineken out there, so we're, we're pretty safe, I think. So, but yeah, Macau's a good crack. It's uh, it's a bit of a. There's not much pressure on us out there. We 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 go out for a bit of fun, and uh, it's good for Daffabet because they're an, an Asian company and stuff like that. So it's brilliant for them. And um, yeah, we just go out there and it's something a bit different. We have a new, new paint job done and a new team gear, and it's a bit of a bit of crack, really. So what would you say your favourite road race is and perhaps what Ivan's is? Um, I think Ivan's is one that pays most prize money, to be fair. He's, uh, I don't think he really cares where he races as long as there's a bit of dollar at the end of it. That yeah, I don't know how much he earns because you know, he don't really splash it out or out. You might get an ice is cream Is it a bit now. tight? Oh, tight. Well, I won't say what it's tight as, but... I've got a lot of family to support. Yeah, it's, you know, <laughs> I think they all put, you know, like they put into a pot in Bardney and then they just take out what they need. You know what, Ivan Linton, come and take a chair. Come on, we're going to fit you in just for two minutes here. You can't be sat in the corner of the studio. It's just not respectful whatsoever. Pull your chair around and uh, we are now jo joined by Ivan Linton here to at Manx Radio TT. And uh, is he behaving himself, Ivan? Yeah, yeah, a lot of what he says is true. I don't know so much about the Bardney thing because he only lives in a little village, so that could be pot kettle but um, he ain't bad in what he says we're, we're, we're having a good TT work well as a team it's all going well isn't it yeah 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 it's absolutely spot on and I think just the the continuity of the team and uh, Daffabet and Devitt being on board all the time you know for the last couple of years has, has really helped settle the team and and it, it's showing today you know last year were a bit of a nightmare 
Um, I don't think Aaron will mind saying it. He's Ed wanting it. Steve's Ed wanting it. And just on that note, just get well soon to Steve Mercer yeah. as well. You know, all thinking about him and Caroline and the kids. And um, this year we've come back with a different focus. We had a different strategy to build up to this, and uh, it's just well, it's showing in it. You know, it's showing on times. Why is your head in it this year, then, Ivan? Um, it, I think it's just the prep, isn't it? Just the build up. It, it, life's good at home, and then it just translates to the racing, getting loads of time on a bike, aren't we? I mean, I reckon I raced 22 days on a bike before we actually come here this year, and we didn't do a road race. We missed the Northwest, which was a bit of a plan. I don't think it's impeded us at all, obviously. The weather helps, and you're blasting around here in the sunny countryside every night. It just sets you up well for the week. Race week's going all on time. It's all good. Yesterday, I was I had the pleasure of watching you on Bray Hill, and I did share a little video of you. And uh, it's fantastic to get out of the grandstand and watch on the course. And what an incredible race the Superstock was! And you were ninth. You got a new PB of 229.1. Amazing race. What was that like for you? Um, it was good, obviously. Um, I've always struggled on big bikes predominantly, and um, they come in, when I come into the pit, I said, oh, it was a bit of an handful, and Danny don't mix his words. He sort of just tells me to get on with it, and it was what it was. And I, I was having a good run on the road with Sam West, but I knew over the mountain I was quicker than him. So I followed him through the twists and stuff. He dragged me through that, and I thought, when we get to Parliament Square, I'd seen my last pit board from Tom Parrish at Salby Bridge, and it said minus five I think so I had sort of five seconds to make up so I thought right we'll knuckle down and try and get this and I, I think I got it be 1.2 seconds or something at the line so it just proves that fitness is good pushing on towards the end of the race is pays dividends top 10 in each race that you've been in so yeah. far this week and you've got one of your long time perhaps favorite race the lightweight tomorrow how are you feeling ahead of it yeah um the, the team have spent a load of money on the bike over winter we've put a lot of development into it and um it is my favorite class we've gone well in practice and um I've got to go out and string four laps together, obviously, the team, and they've got to get me a good pit stop, and then we'll see where we are at the end of the race. It's, it's going to be a tough little race for the little 650 twin, but um, I don't think we'll be far away. And you are feeling good, fitness is good. What do you do to keep fit during the year? Just a load of gym work in, uh, in winter, and then, obviously, I think riding a bike a lot on the build-up to this has helped as well, because um, you use muscles when you're riding a bike that you don't normally use, and you can't train in a gym and everything else. So... Um, yeah, it's all just fallen perfectly into place. You know, we weren't expecting you to be here and it's great to be able to catch up with you and this interview was meant to be about your cruise yeah, chief, Danny Horn. So I suppose we better get our, yeah. we better get back to him because I want to ask you the question before we go to the break. What makes a great crew chief? Um, just somebody... Danny alluded to it continuity like we've worked together now for four years and he's the last person who tightens nuts and bolts on my bike he's the last person who gives me uh, a handshake or a knuckles each other as we leave the grid and do you fist pump do you yeah, yeah fist pump <laughs> and I have fist pumped ben, ben in a pit stop before but I thought he was going to leave me hanging but he did <laughs> but it's just good camaraderie trust each other respect and then he's the first person to slap me on the back when I've had a good race and, and that's mega into it, that's just what you need, your heads need to be in the right place, all work together fine and the results can just come from there. Well, what a great, great racer to be working with Danny. Yeah, like I say, he's a good lad and I know I take the mickey out of him a lot, um, but uh, no, we, we have such good crack and I think this year has been one of his best with, with the build up, you know, going to little, road, little races and, uh, and also a bit of BSB and, and having a bit of a laugh and stuff, so yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's a good lad. Well, we must take a break, so thank you for both joining us live on Manx Radio TT. We wish you all the very best for race day tomorrow, Ivan and Danny Horn. Let's take a break.